Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the most from this great hobby. Today, I'd like to share an idea of how we can approach an impossible task on the piano. By simply chopping it down into difficult tasks, and then breaking each of these difficult tasks into horribly hard tasks. And then each of the horribly hard tasks into a series of tricky jobs. I'm sure you get the idea. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. Before I go any further, I'd like to admit that this idea of impossible tasks and horribly hard tasks and tricky jobs came really from reading a book by Terry Pratchett. I don't know if you know of him, and it's a little off topic, but I've linked one of his books in the description below. It's a book that's got music central to its fantasy theme. It's called Soul Music. It's a really entertaining read, and I think it also just goes to show that inspiration can actually come from anywhere. Now back to today's video. For me, the second cadenza, in fact, to be honest, the whole of Liszt Liebestraum number three, falls into the category of impossible tasks. This piece is too difficult for me to be able to play, yet I'm determined to be able to learn it. For me to be able to play this cadenza at all really is an impossible task. I watched some fantastic tutorials by Paul Barton on how to approach the cadenza, but even then, the starting point that he used would have been too difficult for me to accomplish. So I needed a way of breaking it down even further into things that I'd got a hope of being able to get reasonably under control. That was when this idea of breaking something down from impossible to horribly hard to tricky came to me. And I started to think about how I could structure learning this cadenza in that way. My starting point for learning this cadenza was really using Paul Barton's advice. He effectively says, that think about the first part of the cadenza as being a couple of descending chromatic scales in thirds. You have major thirds in your right hand and minor thirds in your left hand. I recommend you do watch his tutorials on this if you're intending to tackle this piece yourself. I found them really, really useful. Even with Paul's advice though, I wouldn't have been able to really just start from this point, so I needed to start from a different, a tricky job type approach. I decided that my first tricky job would be to simply learn the fingering. Paul very kindly provides the fingering that he uses through his Facebook page, so I downloaded this as my starting point. And then slowly, patiently, I started working through the fingering to try and work out what would be good for me. And pretty much retained everything that he had, aside that I opted to use five and one for the B natural and D natural, in the same way that five and one are used for the E natural and G natural in the left hand. All in all, it took me two hours work spread over about 12 days before I could even reliably remember the fingering. The next horribly hard task I set myself was to try to get the cadenza hands separately up to 100 beats per minute, as Paul had suggested. To do this, as you've probably guessed, I decided to split this down into another set of tricky jobs. The first tricky job I opted for was to actually start to play it in groups of two. So predominantly focusing on changing your fingers within each group without worrying about joining each group of two together. Once then I thought I'd got this reasonably under control, my next tricky job was to think about doing the same, but not in groups of two, now in groups of three. 
So focusing on changing the fingers within the group of three without worrying too much about connecting the groups together. I'd practice like this for just one octave, but then what I do is I do another octave and start the group of three from one half step down. After I'd done that, I'd then start from yet another half step down. So effectively, I was practicing groups of three in three variants, always from a different starting point. Once I was satisfied that this tricky job was okay, my next tricky job, I'm sure you've guessed by now, was to do exactly the same, but now in groups of four. And then again, I'd do the same thing. For each group of four, I'd repeat a next octave, but starting from one half step down from the previous starting point. This then gives you four different variants to practice. I'm sure you're picking up the theme by now. What I then did in terms of tricky jobs was move on to groups of five, then onto groups of six, and then onto groups of seven. Only once I could actually do this did I start then thinking about playing it for two octaves rather than just one. This process just in itself took me something like eight hours spread over six or so weeks. Once I'd got to the point of being able to reasonably control two octaves of double thirds at 100 beats per minute, I decided it would then be time to move on to the next difficult task. Of course, the next difficult task is to start actually playing it in separate notes as written rather than in double thirds. To do this, a couple of horribly hard tasks came to mind with, of course, their associated tricky jobs. For the first horribly hard task of getting one octave reasonably under control, I decided to use the same tricky jobs principle that I'd use for the double thirds. So first, I started by playing it in pairs. Next, I moved on to groups of three. Of course, moving down one half step for each group of three when repeating an octave, so I'd have three variants. Then groups of four. Then groups of five then groups of six, and then groups of seven. My next horribly hard task here was then, of course, to try and get two octaves under control doing this. So to do this, my first tricky job was to use what I call sort of a lilting rhythm. So it's basically a dotted type rhythm when you do that. And I do both variants for two octaves. So that's dot on the first note, or dot on the second. My final tricky job here was then to try and play it by actually accenting the first note of each group of four to give my hands some kind of reference as they were going down as to where they were in it. These two difficult tasks with their associated tricky jobs took me something like 20 hours spread over around four months of very, very patient work. I also noticed though, even with this approach, you have to stay incredibly vigilant because it's so easy for little mistakes to start to creep in. I noticed, for example, that for some reason, when playing a group of five or more, starting from the F sharp in my right hand, my left hand would quite often get itself confused and start to miss notes. 
I finally worked out that it was most probably because, in actual fact, this is the point at which, on the second octave of the cadenza, you use a slightly different fingering in that you stay on the F natural rather than moving down to the E natural in your right hand. And for some reason, my left hand was getting itself confused here. Basically, all I did then was to focus on this particular area that little bit more in each of my practice sessions to try and rule out this problem. It's more or less okay, but I still feel every now and then my left hand has a tendency to miss notes around here, so I still keep working on it. Only now though, after all of this work, did I think that it was about time to start thinking about the final difficult task before, of course, approaching the impossible task that I'd set myself. However, before talking about this, you've probably noticed that so far in this video, I've only actually ever spoke about doing things hands separately. And of course, hands separate practice is vital. However, on its own, hands separate practice probably won't get you to the point that you need to be. What I actually did was once I had mastered one tricky job hands separately, when I moved on to the next tricky job, I then start to practice the first one hands together. So for example, after I learned just the fingering hands separately, when I moved on to practicing the double thirds in pairs, I would then spend a couple of minutes each day just slowly playing through the fingering hands together. Of course, then when I was practicing in groups of three hands separately, I would start to practice in groups of two hands together. When doing sets of four hands separately, I'd do sets of three hands together. And likewise, right until I got up to seven. I got this idea, or at least part of this idea, from Chang's book about the fundamentals of piano practice, where he says that you don't really make a lot of progress, especially with technique, when you're working hands together. You'll develop technique better by practicing hands separately. So I always try to practice with hands separately until that's under control before doing something hands together. This has seemed to work quite well. And now for the almost final stage. My last horribly hard task is to get used to playing two octaves of this double third scale passage in the cadenza. And I've split that into two tricky jobs, as you might have guessed. The first is to simply play one octave hands together. The second is to play two octaves, but keep highlighting the first note in each group of four to give my hands a reference of where they are. It's only really after about five hours of doing this that I've actually started occasionally attempting the impossible task, which is to play two octaves as written, no accents, no highlights, no rhythms. This, I think, is perhaps the most dangerous time, though. Of course, I'm still not at the point where I can play this part of the cadenza perfectly each time. And the problem then is if it takes me two or three attempts to play it correctly once, that actually says that I'm practicing playing it incorrectly more than I'm practicing playing it correctly. I've talked before about the importance of not practicing wrong notes, and I've linked the video just here for you if you're interested in watching it later. So for the moment, I'm keeping up with my tricky jobs, which are the majority of my practice time each day, but just once or twice, I then try from maybe a bar or two before the cadenza, to play the cadenza itself, the entire run down to the bottom. All in all, I'm quite pleased with the progress I've made with this impossible task. 
I know that any experienced pianist, if they listen to me play this cadenza now, will still hear that my hands aren't perfectly synchronised and that it's not quite as smooth as it could be. And I also recognise this and I'll keep working at it slowly in the way that I've been doing. There is one thing that I wish I had noticed when I started trying to learn this. And that was really through something I didn't even think about when I was doing hands together practice. But I had a tendency to always stop on the first note of a group of two rather than the second. What I have noticed is that when I start to play this, particularly at speed, hands together, my fingers quite often will get themselves a little bit confused where the two fingers on the inside of the hand come together because they're less used to recording that thing happening. I should really have done a little more practice on finishing on the second note of a group of two rather than the starting note of the next group. This miss is causing me a few issues at the moment, I admit, so I'm needing to actually do some extra practice, especially to correct this particular problem of making sure that the hands come together perfectly synchronized. So far, this is where I've got to with the first part of this cadenza. I hope you found this video interesting and it's given you some ideas about how you might break your impossible tasks down into something that's more like some more manageable tricky jobs. Do let me know in the comments below how you get on, I'd be interested to hear. If you're not already, then please remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click on the little notification bell so that you get notified of all new videos as they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.